everyone, Kevin here, and thanks for watching The Bottom Line. If you don't already know, this series is all about custom lowered trucks, and today we're gonna focus on how to find and build the perfect classic truck. And we're also gonna show you uh, three different styles of trucks uh, to give you some options when finding your project. We'll also give you some tips on how to avoid some speed bumps along the way and hunting your style that best fits your needs. Uh, I can tell you right off the bat, when finding a vehicle, you're gonna wanna do a lot of research. And um, I can say that, you know, searching online probably isn't the best place as uh, people are wise to the prices of these things. And uh, I've had a few friends that have been wrong this way as they go to see something, it's got an attractive price, you see it in person and then find out it's not as advertised. Uh, so I would suggest finding something um, that you can see in person. Uh, maybe you're driving down the road and see a, a vehicle and you want to inquire about it. Or if you're at a swap meet. Um, that was my story with this truck as uh, I was going to, I was at Pomona swap meet with my dad and we were just hanging out and I already liked first gen 7 Chevy C10s and came across this GMC which is basically the same thing. And uh, we were able to look at it in person, get underneath it, see everything about the truck itself and see where uh, you know any damage was or anything like that. And we were able to strike a deal for like a thousand bucks. Now granted this was 12 years ago, prices have changed since then. But yeah, that's how we got things started with this truck. So when we were ready to dig into this truck, we decided we were gonna go with a uh, shop truck style. And basically what that is, is a vehicle that's ready for some use. You know, you can jump in and drive it. You don't have to worry about door dings or anything like that when you're going into a parking lot. But it's got some style and it's also got some power. It's got, you know, things that make it drive like a modern vehicle. And one of the things that really helped was ditching the uh, 305 V6 that was under the hood. And what we did is we dropped in a uh, Blueprint Engines 383 Stroker uh, Chevy small block. It has 444 horse and 475 torque. So it's got some muscle. Uh, we also backed it up with a uh, 204R transmission, which has an overdrive so that we can uh, cruise the highways at low RPMs. If we go further back, we can tell that we've upgraded the uh, suspension with a uh, four or five drop. We also put on 20 inch aluminum wheels that uh, replicate steelies. And we also put some old school hubcaps on there just uh, for the style. As we go inside, we can see that uh, we've upgraded the steering uh, wheel and the column to make it function better. We also dropped in some autometer gauges so we can uh, see all the vitals. We also put in uh, vintage air, air conditioning unit and a new stereo. Uh, the seat was pretty good, but we did have it reupholstered. Uh, so as you can see on the inside, everything's ready to go and just uh, is ready to drive just like a new truck. So that's the story on how my truck came together and uh, how I went about things. But we're gonna go out to uh, South County Auto Salon as the crew there has a few different vehicles and uh, we're just gonna get the perspective on how they uh, approach their projects. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, hey, what's going? up, buddy? How are you? All right. What's going on? So, hey, everyone, this is uh, Brandon. He has uh, this place here, SoCal uh, Auto Salon. Um, this is Costa Mesa, right? Yeah, I'm Costa Mesa. So, uh, how long have you been running this place? He, yeah, I mean, so we've been building cars for about 20 years. We opened the shop about five months ago. Gotcha. And you've gone through a lot of vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, today, we're, we're talking about like classic trucks and how to find and build the perfect classic truck. And uh, I mean, you've got a lot of experience with it. I mean, I pull up here, you know, there's a couple of trucks right here. So uh, yeah, tell me about, you know, some of your experiences in it. And uh, you know, what would you suggest for somebody getting into it? Like, what would you try to look for? Yeah, definitely. So I've probably built since I was 16 years old, 70 vehicles. It's a, uh, my wife likes to say it's worse than a drug habit. It's the kind of thing that we enjoy doing that, flipping vehicles, building that swag, uh, making them all yours. The thing that I kind of look for is, uh, something that is drivable, usable, that I could put my love into, my spin, and make it mine, you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, um, that's one of the things that really caught me when I came in, is you got Slam Uni here, it used to be uh, Tony Leo's truck, and, you know, speaking of vehicles that, you know, basically someone else started, you know, you know, consider it done, Tony considered it done, but uh, Brandon came in and put his own little touches on it. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit more why you decided to do um, that, why you decided to go that approach and, you know, take someone else's project and really, I mean, is it worth it for somebody to 
to go in and, and get someone else's truck that they've worked on and start from there or building from scratch? Which is better? What do you think? And, um, for me, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like when we first started, we were young. Our, our, our egos were, was always built, not bought. As we become older and be able to usable, having a vehicle, it became bought, put your swag on. For me, I like to buy something that I feel that is 85% done or 75% done that I'm able to see my vision to make it my own. And I think that's gonna be actually a better route for myself of my future and the things that I do. And I, th I think, you know, um, seeing uh, some experience that I've had and seeing some of the built vehicles that I have seen is sometimes people do go in with a project like that because it could save them some time, some money, if they can get a decent, you know, get it for a decent price. So uh, let's check out the Slime Uni and see what uh, yeah. you've done to it. Come on now, let me show you what you're doing. So uh, right away, uh, I can tell you, you know, we rode in my truck, uh, we set it up kind of like a shop truck just so we can drive it every day, just get up and go. You know, it's just nothing really to, to mess with. There's no air system, no anything like that. Um, but uh, as you can see, this is a fully built patina truck is what we call it, you know. So he's kind of done all the, you know, functionality has been taken care of. Like there's a new suspension, it's airbagged, um, it's got interior, all these other things, it, it's drivable, but you know, it's a full piece, but then it has a rusted body. And I think this truck is one of those vehicles that you can't really paint because it's so distinctive the way it looks naturally that um, painting it would be just be, you know, um, sacrificial, you know, you know, covering all that up. You know, like I said, it, it's unmistakable as is, but uh, yeah, show me a little bit more. You know, the good thing is for us, like I look at builders that I actually respect, have a good form. Like Tony has always been a great builder in the industry. Known, the quality, he put this, his, his touch on him, the things that he starts. Things so for Tony, he built the motor, he bought the swag that was in here. The things that we did in which we started off this, so this is all done. So for us, the little things that I saw is I went a little better stopping, I upgraded the booster. From the from the patina that he did the clear coat that was on it we wanted to update and not take away from the patina because this original patina but we updated the chrome we brought in the highlights we brought this back to life so it wasn't so f new patina so this is actually allowing it to bring that newer swag that the polished uh swag uh, the wipers the chrome everything around it that we thought that was going actually going to give it a pop off of what tony actually did we don't want to take that quality of what he did to it for us, we brought it in. Everybody likes doesn't like to show it, but for our shop, at SoCo Auto Shop, we wanted to show some of the work that we did. So we wanted to do full exhaust, be able to show the quality of the, the workmanship and the things that we can do for any vehicle coming in, plus putting my own and twist on, on the interior. So um, I wanted a complete finished interior. I wanted to do all leather. Take that so you had almost like you're sitting in a new Escalade, that new leather smell, you know, over the top, stuff that's all usable that gives you the comfort on top of the original 1961 truck. Gotcha. And I mean, dude, honestly, I mean, like really just kind of like set it off a little bit with the little touches here and there. You know, this truck was already really, uh, you know, impressive before, you know, real looker, you know, anytime it went to a show or anytime it's out on the road or anything like that, people know this truck you know, just by the look it has, but uh, you really upgraded things on it. So uh, it's pretty cool to get your perspective on just, you know, picking up something like that and, uh, you know, putting your own flavor on things and just, you know, upping it, upping the game a little bit. Yeah, you know, for anybody that's coming into, you know, building vehicles, right? This is mostly a hobby or the things that they do. Everybody from low riding, mini trucking, where they do, they want to be able to have their own finished quality that they know it's yours right so you wanted to take it away from like oh that's this guy's truck you're like oh that's great yeah, it was but here's the finished work that what you're actually doing and be able to put in your own flavor and the finishing touches of what you do it makes it feel like it's yours right did you want to build it from the very beginning no you didn't have to do that right which is great some people do want to do that but it saves a lot of time all right so we got some insight with the slam uni and uh, patina trucks you know fully done and how they look and you know just how to build one of those but uh our buddy uh ruben also has this uh 68 c10 here and it, as you may see or as you can see it's been painted and it kind of has more of a classic look to it uh with modern features so we call this more like a resto mod uh sort of deal but uh hey ruben tell me a little bit more about this truck and uh why you did it this specific way um this truck right here was bought um i saw it i had a project actually working and in the process and really it just didn't have any steam. And really I just wanted something that I can buy that was 
more or less done. And, uh, you know, this thing came about and in, in the 68 I, I purchased. And really, I fell in love with the color. And then once I got it, I just wanted to put my own twist on it. So uh, what you see is really, you know, things that I've gone through. Now um, that you've gone, you know, you purchased the project, you got all this stuff. I mean, uh, how are the bones? I mean, was that something you checked out or, you know, is that going to be an issue in the, in the future or is it like pretty good as is? Like, was there any learning curve while during that process or anything? No, completely. It was a, it was a big learning curve because, you know, the, the other truck, I was leaning on people to actually kind of guide me and, you know, buying something that was kind of done, I knew that it was running, I knew that I could enjoy it, but then again, I knew that I could learn off of it. And so for me, buying something that was, you know, I would say done, working, it was an older build, it at least let me get something, enjoy it, and, and put my twist on it. So right away it was wheels, and then right away it was like, you know, cleaning up the interior, and then you know, right away it was you know, trim and, and doing little different things that I could do. So for me, it was putting my twist on it, enjoying it well in the process, having bigger plans for it down the line. So we actually uh, shot this truck uh, before when the previous owner had it. And uh, I started seeing it on Instagram about a year ago and noticed that there was some new touches on it that Ruben did and everything. So, and I think, yeah, one of those touches was uh, the wheels. So Ruben, tell me a little bit about your choice on uh, changing the wheels up here. Uh, you know, the previous owner just had some generic stuff on there, wheel and tire wise, and uh, really what I really wanted to do is put a wheel on there that would change it up right away. Uh, the US Mags was something that I did. Went with a brush finish with a polished look rather than a full polish, more of a retro look. Um, it had kind of a, you know, off-brand tire on there before, but I wanted something that was a little bit better, so the 555 G2 Nitto, that was a better quality for me, matching, you know, back and front. So for me, that was something that was really what I decided on to make it a little bit better, a little bit more mine. Um, and then going into it, you know, we started going into other things. So as you round the truck, you start looking at a lot of things that I changed, little things that made a big difference while I still enjoyed the truck. Um, you know, we went from uh, painted mirrors and to polished mirrors. We went from, um, you know, little things like the wipers to a stainless. We went to, um, you know, updating a lot of the little stuff that was kind of outdated as far as like the emblems. Uh, we went to the interior, we went to a new column, we went to a new steering wheel. Uh, we did the uh, AccuAir setup that was, you know, touch pad in the cigarette lighter. So there was all these little things that I started doing that I wanted to do, but enjoying the truck at the same time, cruising the truck at the same time, and making it mine at the same time. And, you know, in the background, really, I, I wanted something more. And it, really, I wanted to make that impression of it being a better truck, not just something that I bought. You know, um, I wanted to have a whole new chassis. I wanted a new motor. I wanted uh, things that were more my take on it. So the whole process was more of, you know, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna uh, do cruises with it. I'm gonna meet new people with it. And uh, in the background, we have uh, Jason from Arizona High Test doing a whole new chassis, doing an LS3 with a Whipple supercharger. We had the Porterbilt back end doing, you know, um, full chassis, hard plumbed, hard wired, everything. And then finally, you know, we'll end up with um, a new interior and go through the whole thing. And, you know, when you see it in person, it's gonna look as good as you see it on, on, on you know, in pictures. Well, I mean, that sounds like some really cool plans, uh, but I, I really like the way the truck is now. I mean, like it's it's kind of, I would say the mark of where uh, C10s and the scene has gone, um, you know, making everything uh, drivable, you know, the airbag setup, uh, you probably have it set up where, you know, you press a button on, on a system and it just goes up to an auto setting and everything, uh, AC, all the amenities, everything in it, um, to really enjoy it while you're driving it. So you're not just, you know, outside in the heat or anything like that, sweating a bunch of stuff, you know, a sound system in there as well. So you have tunes and all that stuff. So, but uh, just really being able to enjoy these trucks. I think that's how they're built nowadays. Um, I think you uh, did some engine work and stuff like that. It's got an LS in there under the hood. Can we check that out? Well, the LS actually came with it. Um, the previous buyer actually did something with it. And, and he had, uh, he did the LS with the upgraded pulleys and did some uh, motor work to it. But really, I'm looking for something more. I'm looking for more horsepower with the LS3. I'm looking for the Whipple Supercharger that's gonna, you know, add to that on top of that. So 
for me, I, like I said, this truck, bought it as is, enjoying it as is, but not long from here. I mean, it's gonna be a few months that I'm, it's gonna be my truck. It's not gonna be something I bought. It's gonna be full frame. It's gonna be LS3. It's gonna be Whipple charged. It's gonna be Porter built. It's gonna be everything that I wanted it to be, you know, uh, from bumper to bumper. So, you know, buying it, enjoying it, that's been a process. Uh, meeting new people, because I have it, it's been a process. Um, everything about it's been a process. Um, you know, I'm a mini trucker at heart, and I think that, you know, when you come full circle, really, that still, like, is the foundation of why we still do the things that we do. So, you know, meeting, um, you know, the, the, the C10 guy, uh, uh, C10 club, you know, John, and, and meeting Ronnie from C10 Talk, and everybody else that's involved with this, with, um, you know, the brother shows, and all these shows that we do, you know, I'm just a little piece of the puzzle that, you know, I, I, I love meeting new people. I enjoy meeting people that are in this genre of, you know, the trucks and the C10s and everything else. So it allows me to uh, make more friends and have something that really just uh, stems off of what I loved before back in the day. All right, Ruben, you've had a lot of vehicles over the years. You know, you've worked on a lot of them, built them from the ground up. Uh, I take it you've probably found vehicles, you know, even classic vehicles that were uh, pretty much a stock form, you know, and maybe had some issues with that. Um, I want to hear your take on, you know, finding a vehicle like that, you know, that hasn't been worked on before, and what are the advantages of that and, and why you've gone the direction you have? Well, I think that if you have a, a, a base, a foundation of knowing what you should do to it, then you can probably go and seek that out. You can go get a, a truck that's bare and you know something that, that you would buy in a, or a barnyard find, so to speak. But I think that you know, for the most people, some of them don't know that. And uh, for me, you know, I didn't know that, so I wanted to buy something that was already built. But if you go into something that you don't know, I think it runs into trouble because you're relying on other people to kind of source that out for you. But for me, it was already running. So, you know, all the little things and all the little tweaks that I did was more of the things that I seeked out from those people to make it better. You know, when I got it, it didn't drive that good. It had a lot of bumps here. You know, I called the guys from Porterbilt to actually tell me what I needed. And I bought those pieces and I put them on. And I was able to enjoy it and, and, and feel safe driving it. And then I upgraded the brakes. And uh, that was another thing. So, you know, it, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole build that you're doing on top of the build that's already been done, but you're learning in the process to opposed to like something that you would buy stock and you have no idea. You're relying on other people to feed you. So there's so many variances. You know, so many people have different opinions of what you should run. You should run Porterbilt, you should run GSI, you should run Airlift, you should run, you know, Acura, you should run, you know, 22s, 20s. It allows you to at least have some sort of design what you're building for yourself and i think that buying something that's already been done you can transition into that but buying something that's completely stock i think you're from completely ground zero and really you're relying on other people more than you are relying on the outlook of what you want yeah and i think you kind of brushed on that um is that uh what i try to tell people all the time is when you're when you're getting into things getting another vehicle is have a theme in mind, like have one um, fluid theme that you're gonna go with inside and out. So you kind of have like a little bit of a game plan, you know, um, and, and on that note too as well, I mean, there's different uh, vehicles to build, you know, obviously C10s like this are very, very popular, uh, easier to find, easier to work on, but there are other vehicles. I mean, take this, uni this unibody over here. It's quite different. It's a little bit harder to build, um, but there's also, you know, other things like Dodges like D100s that are pretty cool. Um, some guys have worked on those, but they're really hard to work on. So it just depends on what you want to do. Uh, speaking of that, like, you know, going with a Dodge or anything like that, it will be definitely unique if you build something like that and can actually take it to the level of something like this. But it's all up to you and what you want to do and what, what you want to accomplish. So, um, Ruben, thanks for your insight and everything. Yeah, it's cool no problem, checking out man. your truck and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, I hope everybody, um, or that gives you a better idea of uh, how to get into, you know, finding a uh, classic truck and building the perfect classic truck. Uh, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, give us a like. Uh, if you had a different opinion about something, drop a comment below and we will see you next time.